Hello everybody. Now in this module 7, I will try to discuss about the powder processing technologies. So in, nowadays in modern industry, we can see that there is a lots of application of the powders rather than the application of the raw metal in the form of a sheet or in the form of a billet. So therefore, it is very important to uh, discuss about the powder processing and related manufacturing processes and of course, using the powder what are the different manufacturing technologies has been developed, we will try to discuss and which is uh, one of the most important aspect in modern manufacturing technologies. So, first we will try to distinguish that metal, ceramic and uh, polymeric powders and what way th this can be characterized. Then we will try to look into how powder can be compacted following the certain uniaxial pressing, isostatic pressing and what are the different variants of the uh, powder uh, compaction methods that we will try to discuss in this particular module. After that we will discuss little bit about the additive manufacturing and that is related to which is uh, raw material used in the form of a powder. So that type of additive manufacturing process we will try to discuss and then we will discuss using the powder what we can develop the functionally graded materials or functional parts can be manufactured using the additive manufacturing technologies. Then we will look into the different thermal treatment usually involved in the uh, powders and the manufacturing process associated with the powders and then we will look into the different sintering process and how the grain growth occurs associated with the uh, processing of the powder materials. Then we will look into rotational molding and the selective laser sintering process also and which is mostly applicable uh, to raw material uh, as a powder and then few case studies we will also discuss associated with the powder. So, but in this uh, uh, this sub module I have divided all this content of the powder processing in the different sub modules though this particular sub module I will discuss about the these two part first two part characterization of the metal ceramic and the polymer powders and then powder compaction method and using the uniaxial pressing isostatic pressing as well as the its uh, different variants this thing. So, these two part I will cover up in this uh, powder processing technologies. Now, we understand the powder processing is basically it is a very complex and multi stage operations and it is basically involved the basic step one is the transformation of the raw material. So, from the raw materials to the form of a powder transformation into the powder and then that powder then how to handle in the in between steps. So, we cannot directly transform the powder from the raw materials, but in between the steps are handling then conditioning of the powders is also required and uh, finally, we have to look ultimately using or what purpose this powder is used in, in case of the industrial different industrial application. So, these are the steps associated with the uh, powder uh, uh, processing when uh, powder processing technology. So, first is the look into the powder production from the raw materials. So, powder production first we collect the raw materials from the raw materials we can follow different techniques for example, milling, spray drying, granulation. So, basically all these techniques can be utilized to perform uh, formation of the, the powders uh, from the raw materials. So, we perform the powder uh, collection following this methodology and then we look into the quality checking whether the proper quality is maintained or not. So, this is the powder production. Then we will the powder handling, what we can handle the powders. First the powder generation is there and then we look into the transport system. That means, uh, we using some kind of con uh, conveyors basically transport powder from one point to another point. Then you try to look in the storage unit and what kind of the storage unit you can use the uh, slilos and hoppers. These are the storage units we can utilize and then for precise utilization of the power we can perform some weighing system also order this thing and finally, dispensing the powder and the desired position. Now, in between we can follow some kind of the powder conditioning of the powder. Conditioning powder we take from the powder as input and then try to look into what are the mixing, compaction is performed, drying all this operation can be uh, performed uh, for the uh, for the powder in it. Then we perform the quality control and finally, the output is the conditioned powder is the output uh, in this particular case. So, basically conditioning means we can some add some add features uh, of this powder which basically facilitate for the manufacturing process. Now, if you look into the powder application, so once we make uh, this powder conditioning then powder applications it involves. One is the process requirement that means uh, which application you are look, looking for as per the requirement of the process. Then 
uh, based on the application we can select the powder the appropriate powder and or formation of the uh, appropriate powder that means their size the distribution all we can choose then we follow the application method usually the powder application method is associated to the extrusion process and once it is done then it reaches to the final product so these are the different steps involved associated with the uh, powders now steps involved in making the product through the powder processing route what are the different steps or basically what are the routes through which powders can process and we can get the final product for example first with the creation of the metallic powders so for example start with the metal powder so metal powder so metal powder there are so many methods to produce the metal powder say such as that atomization reduction electrolytic de deposition uh, carbonyls uh, mechanical alloying so all these kind of the methods are there uh, from which we can get uh, we can manufacture the the metal powders so once it is done then sometimes we uh, along with that we can use the additive lubricant uh, along with the powder so basically additive lubricant is added with the powder and then the steps is the blending of the steps now after blending of the powder with the with the required lubricants then it can be compacted so it can be cold compaction it can be the hot compaction so hot compaction uh, cold compaction or hot compaction that means at relatively low temperature at the high temperature compaction usually happens so cold compaction is basically associated with the pressing isostatic these are the methodology what we can perform the compaction of the powder rolling process also we can apply we can apply the extrusion process we can apply the injection molding operations also just to achieve the cold compaction of the powders so even in case of the hot compaction we can follow the isostatic pressing also so that is the associated with the uh, hot compaction of the powders so once it is done then we can perform the sintering operation so sintering just is the helps to basically binding of the uh, powders the attach with respect to each other so the sintering can be in presence of atmosphere or sometimes we can a uh, sintering operation can be in the inert gas atmosphere or sintering can be done is the vacuum so that means just to avoid the contamination it during this stage uh, when the we perform the sintering operation of the powders so once it is done after sintering operation then it becomes uh, the solid uh, component and then this solid component can be performed a secondary operation secondary and finishing operation for example from this powder directly we can produce the coining we can perform the forging operation machining operation we can perform we can perform the heat treatment these are the sub second secondary operations or finishing operation uh, secondary operation can be performed machining can be the finishing operation then infiltration uh, plating all this kind of the finishing operation can be done on the on the powder uh, component so these are the steps involved the the product which is starting from the uh, powder so uh, okay now we try to look into the characterization of the powder so characterization of powder is basically we know that powder is basically consists of the particles and the that are the smallest invisible units so there are wide range of the particle size is possible in in ssp powder it depends on the what kind of the manufacturing process uh, a powder we are following based on that there is a wide variability of the size of the powders is possible but in general powder consists of the particles that are the smallest individual units now characterization of the powders consists of the uh, the different characterization method we can follow uh, to measure the measurement of the particles and the is the basically um, as the bulk properties so there are different characterization techniques for example we can look into uh, this distribution of the powder particles so first distribution of the powder particles means in the sense that that what is the frequency for the this is the maximum size of the powders and what is the minimum size of the powders or what is the variation of the particle size is basically contained in a in a bulk material so that's why distribution of the powder particles is very important parameter that needs to measure because it is not possible to manufacture exactly the same size of the same particle size of the powders so there must be some variability of the powder particle size will be there in a powder second is the flowability and the packing of the powders how quickly how good the powders can pack what are the shape of the powders basically what is the surface energy associated with this powder so how it can 
readily flow during the compaction period or not that has to be measured. So, that means flowability of the powder how quickly it can flow. So, such that it can transport from one position to another position. So, in that case is the flowability of the powder is very important uh, parameter. So, do we need to look into the flowability of the powders and how efficiently the powders can be packed together. Then frictions among the powder particles this is another measure that uh, what is the frictional force available between the powder particles. And finally, we look into the measurement of the compositions, homogenization and the contamination in the powder particles all measurement are also required to characterize the uh, powder particles. So, these are the steps we look into these particular properties or uh, this particular aspect uh, of a powder. Now, types of the particles present in powder. One is the particles is that primary particles. Primary particles is the density of this particle is nearly equal to the actual density of the raw material or parent material. So, in, in that case we can say these are the primary particles of this powder. Now, agglomerates is the number of primary particles are bonded together by the surface energy or sometimes we can use the liquid resin so that it can bond together that is called the agglomerates is the number of. So, it may happens associated with the powder. So, it is basically we can the simply we can say the, the um, this is a cluster of powders they, they stay together. Now, what are the driving force for this particular to the for the formation of agglomerate is that in this case is the energy is required is basically surface energy into area by volume ratio. So, actually it depends on the more on the area by volume ratio of the of the particles. So, that is why these are the driving force basically surface energy is the driving force in this case uh, for the um, these particles what way they can form the agglomerate or not. Then flux is the formation of the agglomerates takes place in the liquid suspension then it is known as the flux. So, these are the uh, different types of the, the particles the uh, types of the particles present uh, in, in, in a powder. So, this we can characterize this is, is there any primary particles is there only or some agglomerates is there also or if there is any flux. So, these are the different types of the particles we can we can identify in a powder. Now, try to look into the characteristics of the metallic powders. So, what are the different characteristics of the metallic powders is we can see the typical behavior of the metallic powder usually spherical or it can be irregular shapes also usually density is very high and conductivity is also very high it is because it is a metallic powder. More often used in the sintering operation we can use the metallic powder for the additive manufacturing operation and you can use the metal injection molding operation we can use all these uh, metallic powders. Now, common characteristics technique that means different properties of these powders can be measured uh, is that one is the particle size analysis. So, we use the laser diffraction techniques to understand the particle size and their distribution. Then we can use the scanning electron microscopy also for the morphology of the particles when they are bonding together that morphology can be measured by the ACM. Then XRF X-ray fluorescence is the for composition analysis for the in basically applicable for the particles. And then tap density the flowability test also can also be performed to understand the applicability of the this particular powders metallic powders uh, for an uh, any other manufacturing process. Similarly, characteristic of the ceramic powders the typical characteristics of behavior of the ceramic powders is like that. Ceramic powder is usually very brittle, very hard and often angular shapes. It is a very difficult to find the ceramic powder in the form of a spherical shape is usually the angular shapes. Of course, we know the ceramics as also having the low thermal and electrical conductivity even that is true for the ceramic powders as well. Actually, ceramics powders is mostly used in the in case of the coating. So, we can put the ceramic coating also in that case is most widely used the ceramic powders and this ceramic particles can also be used as a refractory materials in the different uh, other applications. Now, the common characteristics techniques for the ceramic powders is uh, actually one is the particle size analysis can be done the, the basically distribution of the particle size shape. Then ACM for the uh, morphology of the particles and the ACM can also be used with the surface roughness of these particles. Then BET uh, analysis can also be done for the surface area measurement uh, these uh, for the characteristics of ceramic particles and of course, X-ray can be used the phase analysis. So, these are the 
typical characterization techniques we can follow in case of the ceramic particles. Now, if you look into the characteristics of the polymer powders, it is basically we can see the behavior of the polymer powders is something like that low density, very irregular shape and or it can also be spherical shapes that is uh, possible in case of the polymer powder. But polymer powder elasticity is very high and the melting point is also low as compared to the metals and ceramics that is the difference for the polymer powders as compared to the ceramics or metallic powders. And of course, the polymer powders can be used in case of the coatings, powder coatings, in case of the additive manufacturing and even we can see the pharmaceutical applications also we can find out the application of the uh, polymer powders. Similar way the characterization techniques for the polymer powder can be done using the dynamic light scattering to understand the particle size to measure the particle size then differential scaling scalarimetry DSC to evaluate the thermal properties of the of this polymeric powder and we can use the Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy FTIR and this to understand the chemical structure of this uh, polymer powder. So, these are the we see the metal ceramics and the in the polymer uh, all these cases we try to understand the first is the this typical behavior to the what is the shape and nature of the powder particles their shape and the typical properties also and we can measure the properties using the uh, different instrument or different methodology we can measure the properties of the powder. So, in this case we I have just tried to give some overview of the different characterization techniques uh, of the three different types of the powders. Now, once we understand the powders their characterization technique then we can look into the powder compaction method of uh, what a we can powder can be compacted to make a the shape and the size of a uh, make a particular component uh, from the powder. So, powder material does not consist of the flowability like liquids of course, we cannot expect the powder materials can flow uh, like liquid and that is why when it is necessary to perform the compressive load is done until equal and uh, opposite force is applied. So, basically try to break the uniformity in the compaction. So, it is better to use the flow uh, the same amount of the deformation from the top and bottom side of a particular component. Therefore, force responsible for the compaction are developed due to the so resistance developed from the bottom punch. So, resistance developed from the bottom punch force and the friction basically friction between the powder particles and friction between the surface and die between these two surface of the die. But that means, between the surfaces of the die there might be acting the friction as well as the friction between the particles. This uh, this actually develop the force required to compact the powder particles. Now, powder compaction techniques what are the different techniques we can follow the powder one is the with the application of the simply application of the pressure of course, the compaction can be done without application of the pressure and uh, these are the basic two methods one is the with application of the pressure and one is the without application of the pressure. So, with application of the pressure we follow the cold die compaction technique. In this case pressing the powder with single die uh, only one die and or pressing of the powder using the double pressing that means two die from the top and bottom both side the powders can be pressed together with the application of the pressure and other is the isostatic pressing. So, in this case we try to bring the uniformity of the pressure uh, throughout the any any dimension we can try to use the isostatic pressing. This are the with the application of the pressure, but without application of the pressure this this powder compaction can also be done through injection molding operations and it can be the loose powder sintering operation. So, we can perform the sintering operation just to compact the powder. Slip casting process also we can follow the with that application of the pressure even slurry casting also we can gather the powders together, but without application of the any kind of the pressure. So, these are the powder compaction techniques. Now, try to look compaction of the powder using pressure. In this case definitely this is associated with the application of the some external pressure uh, to compact the loose powder that is this thing loose powder particles. Now, what we can apply the pressure it can be unidirectional pressure it can be bidirectional pressure or it can be hydrostatic pressure. So, hydrostatic pressure can also be applied uh, to compact the the loose powder particles. Now, if we follow the die compaction method. So, this is one methodology say one process one die compaction. So, in this fabrication process the loose powder is formed 
fill in the into the die using the mechanical or hydraulic we can use the, any kind of the mechanical or hydraulic press we can utilize such that densification of the powder gradually happens. So, in this case now how effectively the densification of the, the powder particles with the application of the pressure uh, happens it depends on the what type of the material and what are the structural properties of the powder particles. So, all actually are the factors for the densification of the uh, powder particles. Now, this compaction of the powder can be unidirectional, it can be bidirectional, uh, there are uh, uh, consists of the, the number of stages are the same whether it is unidirectional compaction is there or whether it is bidirectional compaction is there. First is the first step is the charging of the powder mixture. Second step is that application of the external load using single or double punch we can utilize this thing just to apply the pressure to the powder. Then once it is done we can retraction of the punch we can return back the punch for the removal of the load remove the load and then once it is done then we can removal of the green impact. So, we can use that uh, then green impact is basically removed from the die. So, these are the steps. Now, on the application of the pressure powder goes through the following successive steps. So, this I am talking about the mechanism of the powder compaction, but in this cases the when what happens when the this is the application of the pressure to the powder. So, in this case first step is the rearrangement of the powder particles. So, powder the when loose powder is in contact with the uh, some kind of the punch here. So, first step is the during the compaction method first step is the how the rearrangement of the powders usually happens. So, in this case initially on application of the pressure usually large pores occurs resulting in the higher coordination number. So, initial stage we can get the large pores uh, because of the in higher coordination number that means uh, coordination number of the uh, particles. But once the large pressure pressure is gradually increases or with, with the application of the high amount of the pressure then it becomes more compacted. So, it becomes more densification in this case higher packing efficiency we can achieve with the application of the large amount of the pressure. So, definitely when higher packing efficiency achieve it actually gradually reduces the, the porosity it reduces the porosity between the these powders and of course, formation of the new contact between the particles. So, then contact one particle to another particle the contact area is gradually increasing with the application of the large amount of the pressure. So, basically contact area gradually increases at a large pressure. Then in this case smooth or hard particles they exhibit the superior rearrangement of the particles take the position this thing and slip also occurs between these two and then uh, the rearrangement of the particles very uh, the very smooth and hard particles they actually follow very good rearrangement uh, within the space with the application of the uh, pressure. Now, further enhancing the pressure definitely up, after if you enhance the pressure then it is improved packing though so it becomes more packed. As more pressure is applied the particles come close together and the also gradually pores also reduces porosity also decreases and new material contacts are formed. So, that is the that gradually increasing the compacting this no uh, in this cases the porosity decreases more particles are come in contact and uh, this gradually happens. Now, once it is completely rearrangement of the particles is easily done then if you further increase the pressure in that cases they initiate the deformation of the process. So, that means the powder particles will try to deform with the application of the large amount of the after rearrangement of the particles further application of the load or pressure then deformation of the powder particles usually happen. So, deformation mechanism starts at the contact point. So, they in that cases that the deformation starts at the contact point. Now, in this case uh, powder compaction process with the application of the pressure to the powders is basically convert in the required shape. So, they convert in the required shape for example, in conventional compaction method involves the compression uh, where the opposing punch press the powder inside the die usually the if you see this figure. So, this is the punch is basically apply the load here and gradually compaction occurs and it is you can see the application of the load close in contact it becomes increase the more contact uh, between the particles. Now, 
parts are produced after compressing which is known as the green compact uh, or we can this terminology green is basically utilized it is not fully processed there is a possibility of further processing to imp impart the strain of the component. So, that is why it is called the green compact that means there is a scope to further improvement of the strength. So, green strength of the press part is insufficient uh, it is sufficient but at the same time the in this case the green strength is sufficient but in this case it is actually significantly weaker compared to the parent material. So, that means further processing is also required and that to impart the uh, bring the strain close to the parent metal we follow the sintering operation of the after the green compact process. Now, once this is the rearrangement of the particles is usually done in this case then we follow the compaction of the powder. So, it a hydraulic or mechanical press is utilized they compress the powder and can get the desired shape and size of the as per the size shape and shape and size of the die and pressed powder is known as the green compact we can see that how it evolves with the application of the the this uh, compressive load the compacting of the powder here you can see that now we can see the power compaction is the further little calculation for this power compaction is that uh, first we start with from this point we can take the this applied pressure and the diameter d and the transmitted pressure by this element at a distance y we can say or at a uh, distance y you can say this is the this element dy small element we can consider diameter and the small element what the different forces are acting here pt the applied pressure here you can see the applied pressure and pb the transmitted pressure pb and friction also happening in this cases this uh, normal and the, this is frictional force and this is the uh, normal force over this elemental length dy now if we force balance on this particular element uh, of this cross section one cross section A, the what is the force balance? You can say that cross section area into A, this pressure PB minus PT, so difference of the pressure plus frictional force. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, Fn, the here the uh, mu into Fn, the frictional force equal to mu into Fn. So here is basically FF frictional force. This would be balance in the, in this case. Now, here you can see the Fn depends on the applied pressure while powder processing. So, Fn is basically proportional to the uh, P pi d into y. P is the pressure, say P is the pressure at a distance y, we can say like that. And pi d is the this perimeter is the pi d and projected length along the dy. So, uh, in this case, uh, it depends on the pi d into, d, uh, into y. So, that means at a distance y the perimeter and the pressure the Fn is proportional to that, but Fn if you calculate this one. So, K is the constant of proportionality, P is the pressure and pi d is the this perimeter and dy is the projected length. So, this is basically indicate the area dA is something like that. Now, here you can see that Fn by pi d dy is basically K into P equation 1. Now, we know that friction force equal to mu into Fn, we can say the frictional force equal to mu into Fn, we can put the Fn value here also, we can get this equation. So, that correlation it is possible during the powder compaction method. Now, we can do the further calculation, we already calculated the Ff equal to mu into Fn using equation Ff frictional force in terms of the K pressure P dy. Now, if pressure P at a particular depth, so pressure actually vary with respect to the depth also, particular depth during the compaction say and PT and PT is the pressure at the top then the difference of the pressure DP can be like that. So, DP can be P minus PT, P is the absolute values of the pressure at a distance at a depth and PT is the, the compaction pressure which is applied. So, here change of pressure DP equal to actually P minus PT here in, in this case and is basically that is equal to uh, mu Fn by A area on this thing because we have we can say that force balance P minus here P T is basically uh, equal to minus of frictional force here. So, here minus of frictional force mu into F n n is the frictional force. Now, we can go the other side A. So, here P minus P T equal to minus mu F n by A. 
Now, if you get it, we can get the f n, we can calculate in terms of the mu k pi dy here and a cross section area equal to pi by 4 d square. From there, we get this relation. Now, if we perform the integration to obtain the pressure at any depth x, for example, at a depth x, the part from this pressure can be like that p x equal to p 0 into e to the power minus 4 mu k x by d. So, here you can see that uh, this at a particular depth x is starting the pressure, the initial pressure is the p 0 with reference to the p 0 is the exponentially decreasing with increasing the x. So, therefore, we can say that this compaction pressure depends on the depth of course, at particular depth on which we are measuring. So, here it is the most x is the variable here and the coefficient of the friction constant k and the diameter is more or less constant. So, we can say that it is basically compaction pressure depends on the depth measuring. Now, on compaction with the higher h by d. So, height by d ratio is basically in this case on compaction with the higher h by d ratio compaction pressure is usually lower, but higher pressure at the same time produces the shorter compact compact with the large diameter that is also possible from this expression we can say like that. Therefore, double action pressing is more common and applying pressure in the double action is more effective than is basically single overall you can the single acting pressure that means application of the pressure using the single punch is the not good as compared to the when you apply the pressure using the double punch. So, I mean to say that pressure using the double action is more effective as compared to the single action and the pressure can vary following this expression that means it is basically exponentially decaying with a reference value of the pressure P0 based on that it is gradually decreases. Now, try to look into this thing the green density and the strength. So, one is the green compact uh, or green strength it is produced with the application of compacting pressure. Then you try to look into the green density and the strength how to relate between these two green density and the strength. So, green density or sometimes it is known as the green density or the fractional porosity remaining after the compaction process is determined by the applied pressure is basically d epsilon equal to minus alpha dp into epsilon here epsilon is the fractional porosity or we can say the green density fractional also porosity or green density p is the applied pressure and alpha some constant value and uh, and it alpha also depends on the material properties so therefore you can see that by application of the more and more pressure definitely porosity will reduce so that we can see the indicated porosity reduce means it is indicated by the this negative sign so, that is for and dense structure will produce. So, that is obvious because if you it is a it is a very uh, general understanding that if you apply the more and more pressure then we can say the porosity is gradually decreases. Now, on integration of equation A we can find out that logarithm of epsilon 0 equal to minus alpha p. So, here epsilon 0 represents the apparent porosity or the porosity at the start of the compaction process. So, at the start of the compaction process epsilon 0 equal to porosity. However, this equation does not fully account for the compaction mechanism. So, it cannot simply explain of the compacting mechanism it is just correlate with the this amount of the porosity with the application of the uh, pressure P during the compaction process. Now, because why it cannot complete mechanism because initial phase we have already discussed about the rearrangement of the powder particles. So, when powder in the starting the uh, compacting of the powder initially some phase associated to the rearrangement of the uh, particles one is the rearrangement of the particles then it is try to deform the particle and uh, this thing and then it becomes um, further deformation it becomes more denser. So, therefore, at the starting of the application since rearrangement of the particles takes place and DCF disappearing of the starting pores will take place basically rearrangement of that atom powder when rearrangement of the powder particles takes place accordingly the the there is a disappearance of the porosity also takes place. Therefore, uh, on considering this above equation can be modified is that so here this equation can be modified because this equation does not take care of the initial phase of the powder rearrangement. But if you consider the rearrangement of the powders, we can say that it is a some constant term we can introduce here, which is basically accounts the initial rearrangement of the powder particles during the compaction method. So, this is the more refined equation we can utilize to 
better explain the green density or the fractional porosity remains after the compaction process. Here some understanding of the fractional porosity. So, we can see the stainless steel being a higher strain material undergoes rapid work hardening that is there because you know stainless steel is the elastoplastic material and the strain hardening effect is much more the in this case. So, very quickly the the reach the ultimate tensile strain with the that is why work hardening rapid work hardening effect is having for the stainless steel. So, therefore, during compaction very quickly the work hardening reach the work hardening effect is very active for the stainless steel. So, therefore, resulting in the highest porosity at any given pressure compared to the other two lower strain material. So, in that case you see the density fractional porosity is much more in case of the stainless steel it can reach because very because the rapid work hardening may not be accommodated to basically densify to take the space of the to create this um, porosity associated with this uh, material. So, this happens this thing, but it means that lower strength material is that they can uh, the ore material is having the low work hardening effect in that case is the porosity after compaction the porosity remains the less in this cases. So, here you see that due to the higher strength of the stainless steel its fractional porosity is always on the higher side that is very obvious from the figure also this the porosity is always in the on the higher side because of the the high strength of the material. Now, with the low strength the porosity is the lower side. Now, the relationship between the material properties and the compaction process can be expressed in terms of the green density or the functional porosity is like that sigma equal to C sigma 0 F the density. So, here sigma 0 is the rot strength. So, basically sigma 0 is the rot strength means uh, in this case the in the raw material the what can be the strength is the sigma 0. So, there are various forms of the F uh, rho but commonly accepted form is the rho to the power m. So, we can simply put the values of the m and can correlate this thing. So, the strength can be green strength can be calculated using this equation. So, therefore, the equation very simplified to the power law equation of this form. So, that means we can very simplify is the secret c sigma 0 rho to the power m. So, this is the power law can be utilized in this case uh, of course, we need to find out the what is the values of the m also here, but this is more readily can be simplify the equations uh, for to represent the green strength uh, of an or compaction strength in case of the, the stainless or different material. So, here see the stainless steel iron and of course, this compaction pressure is, is the uh, same the porosity uh, reach the, the same amount of the compaction pressure, but in this case the porosity for the stainless steel is much more as compared to the iron and copper. Now, what are the influencing factors for the powder compaction. So, different factors are there that uh, this which affect the power com compaction method one is the variation of the particle size. So, in this case the small particles is basically lead to the very uh, inter particle high amount of the inter particle frictions and it basically associated with the small pores if the particle size is smaller, but which do not collapse as easily as the larger pores. So, in this cases may not able to very small pores are there, but not able to collapse uh, the as compared to the which cases it is having the large amount of the pores at the lower pressure in this case. Of course, increased work hardening results in the smaller particles. This work hardening effect is the much more it try to increase work hardening always results to the very small particles since the dislocation slip distance is basically shorter. In this case the dislocation slip occurs the shorter distance has to move to when the dislocation slip occurs. So, therefore, while the larger particles have a high rate of the densification. So, larger particles having very quickly the rate of the densification is bigger, but in this case uh, this smaller particles the densification is the lower as compared to the higher uh, particle size. So, therefore, smaller particles lead to the sometimes the increasing the spring back effect much more and the more prone to the cracking. So, smaller particles might be possibilities that it is having the large amount of the elastic spring back as compared to the higher larger particles and when the spring back effect is there that means it will try to create some kind of the, the initiate the crack formation during this process. So, here is the variation of the effect of the variation of the powder particle size. 
Now, powder particle morphology. Powder particle morphology is basically compressing spongy particles is there. Is the, then it is difficult uh, to perform because their internal pores collapse at the first and then resist for the deformation. So, first internal pores actually is there any that collapse and that actually resist for the deformation of the particles. So, therefore, spongy powders tend to have increased spring back effect. So, if there is a spongy powders is there, they will always try to enhance the spring back effect when ejected and more likely to spring back effect is much more it basically try to create some kind of the crack during the compaction process. So, therefore, particles with the irregular shapes can interlock in the better way. So, they are irregular shape they can interlock with the better way with each other and that actually enhance the uh, green strain. So, therefore, two things are there if there is a spongy particles is there then it is difficult uh, because spongy particles always associated with large amount of the spring back and it is creates it can it may create the cracks. But on the other side if the particle size is very irregular. So, they can interlock uh, is a more effective way and therefore, they enhance the green strand. So, these are the effect of the powder particles morphology. Similarly, impact of the material properties. So, impact of the material properties the yield strength. So, particles with the high yield strength are resistance to the uh, deformation definitely when the high amount of the yield strength is but yield strength that actually resist are resistant to the deformation. So, this is the the in this way we having the effect of only the yield strength associated with the uh, material properties in during the comp during the powder compaction. Of course, there is another factor which influences the powder compaction method that is the hardness of the particles. So, increased powder the increased particle hardness impairs the compaction. So, too much of hard particles is there that actually impairs the compaction and leading to the green density lower green density. So, it is difficult to basically the high hardness particles is very difficult to make the compaction and that actually try to reduce the green density of this uh, particles. Now, harder particles undergo actually the particles is very hard they actually try to go more fragmentation and usually with the application of the pressure and at the same time plastic deformation also high uh, both fragmentation as well as the plastic deformation of the particles are associated which the, if the particles are very hard. Therefore, it can be more useful when these harder particles can be mixed with the soft particles powders and of course, some compatibility depends on the extent which the harder particles can connect uh, or integrate with the mixture. It means that soft particles and hard particles, soft particles try to deform take the space of the harder particles. So, therefore, this compatibility completely depends on the uh, how they, the mixture can form between the hard particles and the soft particles. So, usually when hard particles present usually the hard particles is the low amount. So, it has a very little impact, but in the high concentration it forms a network that lowers the density. So, basically high amount of the high concentration of the harder particles is always try to make some the lower density. But if we mixed with the, the proper way uh, the soft particles along with the hard particles then it actually brings the good amount of the strength. But when hard particles concentration is much more it actually this creates the networks and basically lowers the green density after compaction. So, here this is the way we can uh, explain the in influence factor of the hardness for the power compaction method. Now, I will try to look into the isostatic pressing. So, how that compaction is there now, what, uh, what way the methodology we can follow uh, to press the this to compact the powder particles. One is the isostatic pressing. So, cold isostatic pressing CIP, it is basically applying the fluid pressure at the room temperature usually to a powder must to a shape it. So, to powder and is applied applied uh, by the cold isostatic pressing is basically fluid pressure to shape of the component. This techniques can compress powder up to 80 to 90 percent of the theoretical density. It is possible to theoretical uh, 80 to 90 percent powder can be compacted using the cold isostatic pressing and using water sometimes you can use in water or oil as the pressing medium. So, basically we are using the fluid pressure. So, either oil or water can be used at the, at the fluid medium to press the powder, but it can reach up to 80 to 90 percent of the uh, theoretical density is possible to achieve using the cold isostatic pressing. 
but this process effectively produces the very high density we can say that very high density component 8 to 90 percent or of course near net safe green parts. So, even the actual component safe of the component can be achieved even it is more complex also that can be achieved and very long even for the very thin wall component can thin wall cylinder can also be produced using this uh, cold isostatic pressing operations. But main feature of the cold isostatic pressing is the pressure is applied uniformly in all direction. So, therefore, and here we use the fluid as a medium through which the pressure is applied here and within an elastomeric mold fluid kept within an elastomeric mold and containing the powder at the room temperature and then we apply the isostatic pressing this thing. So, here sinter component, but after isostatic pressing if we perform the sintering operation then it is possible to achieve 97 percent of the theoretical density of this powder is possible to achieve using this process. Now, of course, in this case good mold filling is essential uh, because to, uh, to uh, get the very complex shapes and powder can reach equally apply the compressive load even very very complex uh, part is there. So, basically it should reach each and every con corner of the uh, mold cavity the pressure can be applied there. So, therefore, it is essential the initial powder distribution and density affect the final shape of the uh, part form. So, that means when you are try to produce the complex shape of the component. So, in this case powder should reach definitely very complicated and in the each and every corner point of the mold shape at the same time then it is uh, it even we it is possible to apply the uniform pressure uh, on this particular position. So, but the this effectiveness depends on the initial powder distribution of the what is the distribution of the powder particles and what is the initial density and that actually affect the final component. Therefore, the flowability of the powder into the mold and this packing density are influenced by the powder size, what is the shape of the powder, what is the density of the powder and what are the mechanical properties of the powder or is there any contamination of the powders is there or not all actually the effects to achieve particular packing density of this powder using this isostatic pressing operations. But of course, always we need to find out the optimal pressing is always required uh, by using the powder with the good flow properties in conjunction with the control variation of the mold tapping operation. Control vibration on mold tapping operation will always try to we can enhance the uh, compacting capability uh, of this uh, of this powder. So, so here high density is achieved at the lower pressure during the pressing. So, when you try to pressure is applied you can see the green compact this figure pressure creating equipment from this equipment we can see the create the pressure the uniform pressure in the uh, try to bring this is the flexible mold. So, this flexible mold such that it can uh, check uh, it can change the shape also this flexible mold with the applied uh, uniform pressure throughout here. So, you see directly you can you feel by using some fluid medium also. So, that will medium create the uniform pressure or I can the hydrostatic pressure uh, of this component of this flexible mold wall. So, it will create and making the green compact more effectively. So, here high density is achieved at lower pressure during the pressing while green strength of the compact rises linearly with the pressure. So, we can increase the pressure the green strength actually increases linearly with increasing the pressure which is typically can achieve from 100 to 400 mega Pascal uh, strength is possible to achieve. So, initially the shear stress improves the density by enabling the particle sliding and rotation. So, when you rearrangement of the uh, particles occurs and we apply further pressure this thing in that cases the sliding and the rotation of the uh, particles also try to take the accommodate the, the space between the particles. So, in this case basically shearing stress improved when they are just sliding means basically with the application of the shear stress the sliding between the particles will occur. So, that this sliding uh, the shearing stress is in indirectly improves the density of the particles through the sliding and rotation of the particles. So, therefore, after stage following stage the powder particles up once it is there taking the sliding and rotation then then once that stage is over then there is no option for the sliding and rotation then particles the try to deform with the further increase of the pressure and their characteristics such that safe can be achieved and actually in this stage the 
safe can be achieved particular safe can be achieved or if it, it, it can be very complex safe also using this particular stage now if the irregular particles are there which actually interlock and deform throughout the both stages that means in the both stages the when the irregular shape of the particles are there then both uh, in, in this case they can interlock and they can deform in, in, in the in both throughout the stages both the stages and densify more easily compared to the spherical grains. So, spherical grains as compared to the spherical grains when the non-uniform or maybe irregular particles they can uh, sharing between actors with respect to and plastic deformation might happens more easily and it can dense more easily as compared to the only uh, spherical particles or spherical powders. So, therefore, spherical powder despite their higher initial packing density do not interlock mechanically. So, therefore, and deform less, less readily and then in that cases when the spherical particles handles is there, we try to handle the spherical particles in that case it is we need to apply the large amount of the pressure during the compaction period if the particle size are the spherical because they cannot lock uh, mechanically and, and cannot be deformed readily like other irregular shapes. So, that is why in that cases thus for spherical particles we can understand that large amount of the load compaction pressure is required for the to handle the spherical particles. Now, there are variants of the isostatic pressing. One variant is the weight bag process. Weight bag process means in this case the mold is directly exposed to the fluid. So, instead of using some mechanical tooling which is punch which in contact with the powder in this case the mold is directly approached to the in contact with the fluid which reduces the productivity because the bag must be removed before every refill. So, however, this method helps the cutting down of the tooling cost. So, we know extra tooling cost is not required in this particular case. So, in this approach it is the this the mold is directly flexible mold easily the directly in the contact with the fluid. So, we can eliminate any kind of the intermediate mechanical tools just to press the powder particles. So, that is why productivity is higher and the cost can be saved in this case. Even apart from this fixed mold process. So, in this cases fixed mold process the mold is fixed. Uh, so, there is an option to one side powder addition depending upon the shape and size of the compaction or distribution of the pressure inside the inside the mold gravity. So, here one side powder addition is usually done once it is mold is set inside the pressure vessel then in that cases come internal channels are there and internal channels also used for the fluid pumping or part of the tooling use and then powder filling, compaction, despressurization and grit, a green component removal all are continuously carried out using this automated system in this case. So, that is why it delivers very high production rate with the high tooling cost also available, but production rate is also very high in this case the fixed mold process. So, therefore, we can see that, but of course, CIP the coal isostatic press process enables consistent and the control powder densification it is also have ability to press and long even very long component at the as well as the narrow parts also even it can achieve accurate net shape molding. So, very accurate shape of the components can be achieved usually shorter production times and cost effective also processing even for a very large com complex uh, very large and complex structures all kind of the flexibilities or beneficiary the advantages we can achieve in case of the coal isostatic pressing as compared to the other variants of the isostatic. Of course, other variants of the isostatic pressing are the they are having certain advantage or very specific cases we can utilize all this process, but in general we can use the coal isostatic pressing because in general it is having the more flexible, more advantageous, uh, less cost can handle simple as well as the large complex even small or bigger components can be handled using the coal isostatic. So, I mean to say that it is more conventional process using the coal's isostatic pressing operation in case of the handling of the powder particles. Now, one case study we can discuss uh, related to that uh, this to handling the powder uh, particles. Uh, so, optimization and impact behavior of the multilayer uh, AA7075 this is aluminum alloy and silicon carbide functionally graded material fabricated by the hot compaction powder powder metallurgy process. 
So, in this case you see that what we can make the multilayer uh, functionally gradient material using this for this powder particles. So, here the study actually perform to enhance the mechanical properties specifically hardness and the impact toughness what we can improve and by optimizing the key process parameter. So, there of course, any process it is associated with the so many process parameters, but what we can optimize uh, the process parameter such that hardness and impact toughness as well as the mechanical properties can be improved for a functionally graded material. So, in this case the fabrication process involves the hot compaction powder metallurgy technique in this case aluminum alloy AA7075 is used as the matrix material and silicon carbide used as the reinforcement in this case. So, therefore, the authors actually focus on the three critical parameters one is the what can be the compaction pressure, what can be the temperature and what can be the holding time to achieve to improve the mechanical properties of this functionally graded material. So, the investigation find out the optimal parameter setting compaction pressure can reach up to 400 mega Pascal, temperature can reach up to 400 degree centigrade and holding time can be 15 minutes. These are the optimum set of the parameters such that there is a uh, materials mechanical property increase 25 percent around and toughness is increased around 28 uh, with an increase of this in toughness and uh, okay not mechanical properties mean the increase of the toughness equal to 25 percent and increase of the micro hardness around 28 percent. So, using this optimum set of the this process parameters for this this function to perform the analysis of the functionally gradient material. So, therefore, we can see that higher temperature and pressure enhance the bonding between the silicon particles and the aluminum matrix also shows that if the we put the higher temperature it becomes bonding becomes more uh, is uh, more readily happens for the silicon, silicon particles and the aluminum uh, matrix and it can create more dense and the more robust material associated with this uh, process. Now, here you see that even if we perform the microstructure analysis for this case also using the the C remember that when talking about the the characterization of the powder particles or component here also scanning electron microscopy is uh, use energy dispersive excess spectroscopy DX composition and XRD can also be used to understand the dispersion of the silicon particles within the matrix how the silicon carbide particles are dispersed throughout the matrix and how the strong interfacial bonding usually form across the layer to understand all this thing we perform all this the studies this uh, microscopy you can utilize. So, here presence of the both brittle and ductile fractures modes are also there. So, when you understand the fracture surface also both brittle and the ductile fracture modes are observed which is beneficial for the absorbing the impact energy before failure also that means combination of the brittle and ductile fracture means it can absorb the this uh, energy it can absorb the energy before the fracture this thing that is another characteristic behavior you can observe from the study. So, figure also you can see the sequential steps involved in this particular study. So, these powders are ready uh, silicon carbide and um, aluminum alloy uh, they can use the mixing of the powder the first next step is the mixing of the powder then hot compaction process is performed we can see the top plate and the base plate and the heating rod is there just to heat the sample and the upper punch is there and the over the die is there you can measure the temperature also using the thermocouple and the you just up application of the pressure is there hot compaction process is there then we can get this is the layer the different in this case the this uh, different layer can be green compact functional gradient material of the different composition layer we can perform then once it is done we can see this produce the green compact because it is after the compaction process the green compact means the further processing can be done to improve the properties. Once it is done next step is the sintering operation can perform. So, sintering more densification is performed here as well as the modify the uh, properties also. So, once it is done after the sintering operation then this component can be do the toughness test, hardness test, micro hardness and factographic analysis can be utilized to evaluate the different properties of the uh, this this manufacture part this functionally gradient material which is actually manufactured from the uh, the powder starting from the powder aluminum alloy as well as the the silicon carbide particles in this case. So, here this understand the application of the this case study makes to understand the application of the different 
characterization techniques or the methodology to, to perform to produce one functionally gradient material. So, that is all. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.